this video, what I'm going to do is put together all the ancillary stuff that um, is required in the gantry, which is the probe dock mount, the purge bucket, and the nozzle wiper. So, you might have noticed I've already put the heat sets in, so I'm not showing them anyway. It made sense to put them in and also for me to confirm how many are needed. Uh, since, unlike the Z drives, this is only going to be built once and not thrice. Um, so what we have is the printed parts, which is the arm, which basically holds everything in place. So for this, you need three heat sets here and two over here. Now for these, I use the regular 4mm heat sets, or the length of the heat sets are 4mm. Um, you can technically use the longer ones as well. I think the only place I wouldn't use the longer one is here, because this, um, I don't think there's enough space for the longer one. The 4M ones, it's okay here, but for everything else, you could very well use the longer one if you want to. Um, yeah, I use the shorter ones. So this is the main arm. And then we have the purge bucket. The purge bucket is just going to get two magnets, and that's all the assembly that needs. Uh, coming to the probe dock. So this is the bracket, which is going to hold the dock in place. So the dock will go in here. Uh, and this would then sit on this arm. So the heat set here is basically to hold a thermistor. So if you are planning to use a chamber thermistor, you can put it in here and then use a screw to tighten it down. This is the nozzle wiper component. So we have the first component, the second one. Um, this is the wiper arm, the wiper base, and the wiper bracket. So. Each of these parts do need some heat sets, so this one requires two, uh, two heat sets. This one needs one, over here. Um, these two parts do not need any heat sets. So overall you need 13 heat sets, um, two over here, five here, and one and one here, and four here. So I mean, each of these get one and then it's four here. And we're also going to need some fasteners. So we, uh, I put all the fasteners on the table because there's so many of them. I could pick them up well. Uh, you need a 30 mm M3, two 25 mm M3s, three 12 mm M3s, nine 8 mm M3s, uh, with the socket heads, and two button head cap M3s. I'm not sure if button head caps will be required. Um, basically, these are the ones which are going to go. Uh, I'm just thinking which side I'm going to put this on. Yeah, I think. It goes this way, yep. Yeah. Alright, so these are the um, screws that are going to go through here. We'll check if there's enough clearance for a socketed cap, but I had button head caps, so I'm going to use them. And then you'll need an M3 nylock nut. The nylock nut will be captive in here, and um, then the screw, the even screw, will go all the way through and uh, capture the captive nut. Yep, yeah, so these are the fasteners we need. So let's go ahead and start assembling the whole thing. To start the assembly, I'm going to start with the probe dock. The first thing we're going to do is take the two 25mm M3s and insert them into these holes. Um, I guess this is to increase the strength of the arm. I'm not sure if a printed plastic part wouldn't have you know, sufficed for this, uh, considering it's only going to have a dock mount in there. Um, but anyway, so this, let's put these two M. 325s in. And for tools, you probably need the same thing. You need uh, the 2.5mm and a 2mm socket. And also, when I insert mine in, uh, I already tried insert putting one in uh, before making the video. So it did, does discolor the part. So yeah, this side discolored. And uh, I assume this side will now match once I put it in. It's a really snug fit because we're threading in a machine screw into a plastic snug fit part. It's not a self-tapping screw. So it does take a bit of an effort. Actually, at this point, it might have made more sense to use a hex key. You get more leverage with that one. 
Ah, mira, mira. Ah, mira. Alright, so both of them are in. I think that one is, seems to require a little more than this one. So let's try to push this in as well. Okay, so that's done. So we have the two 25mm's in here, and we have even discoloration on both sides um, of this part. So the next thing is, let's try and put the dock in. So I find it helpful to have the cat open um, when you're putting something together. So I have the cat open in front of me, um, so that I know which side or which direction I should be putting these in. So this will then slide on here. And not sure if it needs to slide, you can just insert it from top and then insert into M3 8mm screws. So it might be a bit more convenient to use metal oxide screws because they are magnetic. These ones don't seem to be. Anyway. Maybe this is not magnetic. I'm not sure. Is SS supposed to be magnetic? I am not sure. Okay, so now we have the probe um, bracket in. The probe dog bracket in. Uh, we can add the probe dog, but before doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and see how the rest of it assembles. Okay, so this in this direction, the arm should be mounted this way, right? So let's. Um, I think for this we'll be using the 12 mm M3. So for this we use the 8 mm M3s. We're gonna use three. 12 mm M3s here. Well, I'm not sure you can see it, but I, I have a really horrible fuss layer on all these prints. Um, I mean, all the green parts suffer from this because I forgot to change my offset settings before printing them. So if they do break, because the only problem I can see is because of the first layer not being as close as it needs to be, there would have been uniform under extrusion to an extent on all the walls, which could cause the parts to be a little weak. Um, I guess it's the same with the Z-Drive module parts as well, but uh, if it does break, we can always put new ones. Right, so this is the arm for the nozzle wiper that's been installed now. Next I'm going to go with the bracket. Um, so one thing I forgot to tell you is you also need a bunch of magnets. I don't know, I missed that. Um, you'll need eight magnets. I actually had them with me, so there's a little more than eight in here. But you do need some magnets as well. And uh, yeah, so these magnets will then go in here. And there are two that are going to go in here. Okay, so let's put them, start putting some in and see how that works. So I'm just going to select some polarity and put them in here first. So I saw two inserted in the can, so I'm going with two. It's a really snug fit, um, pretty nice and snug there. Uh, I think there were two in the can, let me just quickly check. Yeah, there are two in the can and they've been pushed all the way to the end, but we'll see if that is needed. So we need to put two in here, but we need to put it in the opposite polarity of those two. So, oh, yeah, so we basically need them to attract, so... Ah, I think I just got one stuck in there, let's see. So which means they would go in like this. Okay, I'm really poor with this, but let's see. Let us see if I'm putting in the right direction. Okay, perhaps a little assistance is required, so I'll make it my... 
Okay, so this has to go in this way. Oh my god, this is so confusing. So, so that means it should face this direction. Uh, now I don't know if it changed direction as well. Alright. Preload it into my uh, player and just put them in there. The went in. So let's just check if they attract. Just um, confirm that is the case. So if they don't repel, they repel on the side. So if that is the right direction. So let me take the other one as well and push it in here. Okay, it's a bit too tight. So then do the same thing. Do be careful when you do this so that um, if you apply too much pressure, you might break the plastic part. Okay, so we have both these magnets in. I'm um, not sure if they should go in a little more. Let's see if I can do that without breaking anything. Yep, that should be alright. I mean, there are some stress fractures here again. Ah, but that's very normal. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is... Well, the next thing we technically need to do is actually fit in the silicon piece in here and um, then put this one on. I did not cut my silicon yet. I did buy some from McMaster Car, I think. Uh, I need to... Okay, and this will need a smaller, smaller one. Let me check. No. It needs a 2mm one, so I put the same 2.5mm one before. So, yeah, the button head caps go in here, and between this will be the silicon piece, uh, which we can add later. And this goes in here, and um, 30 mm, M3 30mm screw goes all the way through. Uh, which acts as a pivot point and then you're going to try to put this captive m3 nut in i'm not sure how easy this is going to be to insert this let's find out obviously you want it to be really snug because if it is not it is just going to turn in that hole and uh, at that point it's just pointless it's just going to eat through the plastic and it's wasted so it looks like this fit is pretty snug and uh, yeah just but it is good enough to, you know, tighten the screw and get a nice fit. But what the point is, after I do this, there is very little movement in here. Okay, so we have a piece here, or rather a stop, which stops it from moving too low down. So this is the maximum movement it has. Okay, so once this is done, this slides in. Hopefully, but uh, right, I'm not just sticking out a bit too much for it to slide in. So I'm not, now I'm questioning whether we need a nylock nut or a regular nut. I thought we need a nylock one, so I used one. Uh, nylock nuts are slightly thicker, but no, I can see it did go in flush now, so this is good. So once you tighten it enough, it does go in flush. Okay, so now this is in here. I'm just going to put an M3 into 8mm socket head cap screw in here. Okay, so we have the arm, we have the bracket um, for the probe dock, then we have the nozzle wiper, which I'm not sure if it's installed correctly but uh yeah we have that done so next we shall go on to maybe fitting the dock in so let's go ahead and complete that
with um, all my metal oxide M3 8mm's are over and I'm just so used to picking them up with the magnetism on the bit and it's, uh, it's going them in and uh, yeah so it's kind of making it slightly inconvenient at the moment but yeah we still work through that okay so the only part then left is the purge bucket which we'll need to put into magnets over here and then it should click in place like this so the whole arm assembly should look something like this um, yeah, I think we're done, so that's really it. Um, the only thing left to do would be to insert these two magnets uh, and of course build the probe, but I, I would consider building the probe a part of the hot end build. That's where it goes, but um, yeah. So this uh, is kind of it. And it's really nice that they have one location where everything is in there. So you have the dock, you have all the ancillaries to the hot end are in one place, which is really nice. But having said that, I can also see that I still have two screws left to M3 and 8 mm's. I'm wondering where I was supposed to put those. Okay, so let's find out if I missed any of the screws that I should have gone in here. Um, oh, yep, there should be one over here. It's a good thing I just checked the CAD. So this is going to act like a stopper for how much this moves. It already moves very little, but I guess there should be a screw that's going in here. There is no heat set for this one. It's just um, screwing through plastic in the CAD. So I'm going to try doing the same thing and hopefully not break the part. Uh, it is kind of, I can see a stretch, stress fracture coming out already, so well, let's see, let's keep going, see what happens. Oh, very precarious. Okay, I can see the screw coming out from the other side and the, the plastic, so hopefully you can see the same thing. Uh, so that is our limiter. And the other screw would go in here, of course. So once you put your thermistor in, um, this screw will then hold the thermistor in place. So those are. So now we used up all the screws that we spoke about in the beginning of this build. So let's try to put the magnets in here as well. So we will get two more. So we'll need to make sure that the opposite polarity of this one. So I'm just going to insert them in there and see if I can. Push it in straight away. Yeah, so this one is a bit loose. Um, this is probably because of the under extrusion I was talking about before. It's probably caused the holes not to be as snug as they need to. Um, yeah, so that's probably the reason. But yeah, once this is in, you can see this purge bucket, so it nozzle purges over here. Um, the excess falls into the bucket, and then you just remove the bucket and clean it off. And you see the magnets came clean off. So I would probably just use a tap of some kind of epoxy to keep them in place or super glue but other than that uh, i guess we are done with the assembly so this thing should allow movement upwards and downwards movement to you know get the um, height right for your particular hot end so you can move it up or down and similarly the dock mount can be moved up or down to get your positioning right and it can also be moved front and back obviously with the adjustments here to get the positioning right so yeah, and this goes into one of the corner 2020 extrusions. So it just goes in the corner and then it's held like this. Um, so, so this is pretty great and uh, looks like we're done with this one. All right, so now that I had a few minutes to play around this, I figured out that um, these magnets have really nothing to do with these magnets. Um, what we, what's gonna happen, I'm assuming, is the nozzle is gonna come over here where the silicon strip is to wipe the nozzle. And at that point, the probe mount magnets, which are on the um, hot end, or rather the um, extruder assembly, is going to line up here, and that's what's going to pull this up. So basically, the polarity that you need to get it right is in comparison to the magnets on the hot end. So 
once you get the polarity right as you can see it will when it comes close it will move up um, when it's um, wiping the nozzle so that's something to keep in mind so it's nothing to do with these magnets the polarity needs to be in comparison to the whatever you have on the hot end assembly and the second thing is I did not install these magnets because I think 6 into 3 is going to be too powerful um, I have the same kind of mount for the quick draw probe on my 2.4 and there you just have screws in here um, for this probably I will use a 6 into 1 mm magnet that I have so I'll put those in um, so it's not too strong to pull away when it needs to come off the dock and the last part are these um, button head cap screws that we used here uh, I can't see any reason why socket head cap won't work so you could just use socket head cap screws if you want but um, yeah, there, there is enough clearance for socket head cap even with the um, purge bucket mounted there should be enough clearance 